Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Anthony. Today I am working at SD4 at Adobe and here I present solution to day 26th of October Lead Code Challenge. The problem that we have in today is contiguous subarray sum. This question is a medium level question on Lead Code and I totally feel the same. The question says you are given an array of integers and an integer value k. What do you need to do? You need to check whether there exists a subarray, a contiguous subarray wherein the sum of the elements of that subarray happens to be the multiple of k. If it does, then we need to return true, otherwise we need to return false. Here they have provided us with an example. I'll be walking you through the algorithm via the same test case through the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Lead code 523 contiguous subarray sum. This is a medium level question as I already told. Although if you still have any doubt understanding this problem or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on the telegram group of Coding Decoded. I'll be more than happy to assist you. Also, if you need any reference, that is the best place to ask for it. We have a community with more than 1700 developers working at all top notches where we regularly discuss problems that we face in day to day activity with respect to development. Any new technology that is sprouting up in the industry and it's an open space where all of us collaborate and grow together. Looking forward to seeing all of you there. The question says you are given an array of integers and an integer value k. You need to check whether there exists a contiguous subarray wherein the sum of the elements of this contiguous subarray gives you a multiple of k or not. So let's hypothetically assume we are given an elements a, b, c, d, e, f in an array and there is an integer value k also given to you. So let's consider a hypothetical scenario wherein the sum of these three elements c plus d plus e is a multiple of k and it is a happy case that you found a subarray wherein the sum of these elements turn out to be a multiple of k. Now how, how are we going to approach this problem? So if you have solved plenty of questions related to maps and prefix sum then when you will read this question you will yourself understand that it can be solved using the prefix, prefix sum technique in general and how are we going to apply this up? This is what I am going to tell you now. So let's consider a hypothet uh, the scenario wherein the sum of the element up till here is given by sum 1. So a plus b is stored in a variable uh, as part of the prefix sum technique in sum 1 and the sum of the elements up till e is stored in a variable named sum 2. So let's write it over here sum 2. Now as per the question what do we need to do? We need to check whether sum 1 minus sum 2 modulus k gives you the value 0 or not. So if I represent this mathematically then sum 2 is a plus b plus c plus d plus e sum 1 is a plus b I subtract sum 1 from sum 2 from sum 1 what do I get? I get c plus d plus e and we, we know that this is a multiple of k. So this will give you modulus k 0 value. This is what we need to check. Now, how can we look at it differently? So let's go back to the same equation, which is this one. Sum 2 minus sum 1 modulus k should be equal to 0. Now, if I move this to the RHS side, what do I get? I get sum 2 modulus k should be equal to sum 1 modulus k. If this condition is met, that simply means you found such a scenario and we need to return true in those cases. This is what we are going to do. So we look out for the possibilities where the prefix sum while moving across this entire array gives you the same remainder that you have already seen in the past. If it occurs, then it becomes a happy case. We'll return true in those cases. Otherwise, we'll return false in those cases. And uh, to represent this math mathematically, it simply means that the remainder for a plus b plus c plus d plus e should be equal to the remainder for a plus b. Now let's apply the same mathematical formula onto this example. So here I'll create a map and this map will store the remainder and the index at which this remainder occurs. So let's start the iteration and what we are interested in finding out whether we have we see this condition or not. If we see this condition then we say true. If we don't see this condition ever while iterating over the entire array then we say false. So let's start the iteration the first element that we have is 23 23 modulus 6 what do you get you get 5 so 5 is not part of this map ever what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make an addition for 5 that we have seen the remainder 5 at an index of 0 
let's proceed ahead the next element that we have is 2 so 23 plus 2 gives you 25 25 modulus 6 what do you get you get 1 so what is one part of the map one is not part of the map so what we are going to do we'll make an addition into the map that saying that one remainder occur at occurs at one index let's proceed ahead the next element that we have is 4 so 25 plus 4 gives you 29 29 modulus 6 what do you get you get 5 is 5 part of the map yes 5 is already part of the map we have already seen the remainder 5 in the past and it occurs at the 0th index which index are we currently at we are currently at the second index so we again check these two indexes are not same these are different indexes and hence we can make this conclusion that since the remainder got repeated we will say that we have found a case where this condition is met some two modulus k happens to be some one modulus k and what are those indexes the first index is this one and the second index is this one wherein we observed that five remainder is there and to conclude it further since this condition is met we are gonna return and abort the whole process we'll say that the answer is true for this particular case however while iterating through the entire array, in case there was no repetition of remainder, then we would have stated the result as false. To conclude it further, let's quickly walk through the coding section. Let's walk through the code algorithm first. I have created a map wherein the key of the map is of type integer, the value is again of type integer. This is gonna store the remainder, this is gonna store the index at which this remainder occurs. And one corner case this I'm going to talk about later on, but let's focus our attention on to uh, this particular code of algorithm. I've created a variable prefix sum initialize it to zero. I start the iteration. I move element by element. I update my prefix sum. I check whether my map already contains prefix sum modulus k or not. If it does contain, what do I do? I compare at what index does it occur? If the in the current index minus the index at which the same prefix sum occurs is greater than one then what does it mean it means that i have identified a happy case i need to return true in those cases otherwise i proceed ahead and make an entry into the map wherein i add the remainder which is prefix sum modulus k and the index the current index under consideration into the map in case this prefix sum remainder doesn't exist priorly and once we have done that once we are out of the loop that simply means that this true condition was never seen we simply return false in those cases now let's talk about few corner cases why i am putting into the map 0 comma minus 1 over here that simply means that the remainder 0 occurs at minus 1 index this is uh, added to uh, for the case wherein the entire array is not considered an empty array is considered as part of your prefix sum the next corner case that we have is when k value is 0, what do we check? We check whether we are able to identify two consecutive zeros in this entire array. If we are able to do that, then we return true in those cases. So this is all about today's question. Let me just submit this up. Accepted. Uh, the time complexity of this approach is order of n. The space complexity is again order of n. No, I think it would be order of k. Uh, why? Because in the worst case, we will have k elements as part of our map. And with this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.